Hi guys, Ross here. I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a great festive period. Happy New Year. I know it's been quite some time since I've been on this channel. Last year was when I made the switch to freelance and that was going really well. So I was kind of just putting all my energy into that. But this year I'm back. I'm going to be pumping out videos, pumping out content for you guys. And today I'm going to be bringing you a quick tip video on how I create this cloudy slash overcast lighting in Cinema 4D and Redshift. Um, it's a really simple technique, so this video shouldn't be too long. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna run you guys through it and hopefully you guys find it helpful. But before we jump into that, I do just want to bring up my Gumroad page. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard me mention this before, but I've added a few projects on here since the last time. Um, got some of these really nice interior scenes and I did just add a nighttime landscape scene which does use some of the same techniques that we're going to talk about today so go check it out as always if you have downloaded any of the products and the project files on here um, I really really appreciate it it helps me to spend more time doing content like this which I really want to this year so any support is greatly appreciated as always the link will be in the description for that so without further ado, let's jump into the video. We are in Cinema 4D and we have a pretty simple setup here. Um, just have this plane at the bottom, which is our water. We have three landscape objects, which are just the landscape objects in Cinema, which I've kind of adjusted. Um, and then I've scattered them with some Quixel Megascans grass assets. Um, I've done quite a nice setup with some user data, but maybe I'll save that for another video. Um, essentially allowing me to use one material but change the color for each landscape object. So yeah, I'll talk about that in another video. Today we're going to be talking about this cloud lighting. So if I just jump out of the camera quickly, you can see we have this floating object in the sky. Now this is acting as our clouds. Um, you can see that this is just a simple plane that I've scaled up and moved out of the camera's visibility. So we're going to dive out of the camera once again and let's dive into the material network to see how we've set this up. So as you can see, really, really simple. Um, we just have a max on noise, which is plugged into the opacity color. So it's going to be taking the white and black values and basically acting as a mask. Um, anything that's black is going to cut out of the original shape and anything that's white will stay there. So these black kind of abstract forms here are what is cut out of the shape and giving us the pockets of light. Um, the white area is basically going to be casting shadow into our scene. So we have this nice contrast of shadow and light essentially acting as clouds. Now this max on noise is pretty much the default. Um, I've changed a few values to kind of make it look more realistic and fit the scale of the scene but nothing too crazy, um, should be pretty easy to follow along with. So let's run through it and I'll just explain some of the different parameters that I've changed. Um, let me just put this back to the surface so we can get our result. So first off, I've found a seed which works well for my scene. Obviously we can keep changing this and we'll get completely different results. If I just jump back into the camera quickly, uh, there we go, let's have a look. You can see now we're getting completely different results. Um, so this seed can really be powerful in finding something which suits your scene. And you can play with this until your heart's content. I just found this number which worked well for this particular project. Um, but yeah, you can play with that until you're happy. Overall scale, I've bumped up to 150. This is just so it's more realistic for the scale of the scene. Obviously, you want to change this and adjust it so that it seems appropriate for whatever project you're working on. Um, but this is kind of like a good value if you're working on these large scale uh, landscape scenes. Uh, just for reference, the width and height of my water um, is 26,000 by 18,000. Um, so hopefully that gives you a rough idea of the kind of scale we're working with here. Um, but yeah, I have that at 150 and then I've bumped the scale on the X axis to two. So you can see this has just stretched it lengthways a little bit. Um, I could bump this up to four, for example, just really stretch that out. Again, this is all just finding scales which work well with your scene. Um, I could bump this number in the middle to four, which is gonna stretch it on the Z direction. So this is all, these are all just different parameters you can play with to get the result you're after. But yeah, I typically leave them at these values and just adjust them slightly depending on each scene. 
Then come down to the output settings here. Um, I've bumped up the brightness to 0 0.1. This is just to balance out the black to white values. Um, if we leave this at default at zero, you can see a lot more is cut out of this original shape. So it, the scene is gonna be a lot brighter in general. Um, so if I just bump this to 0 0.1, just kind of balances it out we get some harsher shadows a bit more shadowing in there um, again this is all personal preference so you know you can tweak these until you're happy but i just leave that at 0 0.1 and then contrast 0 0.9 um, so this is really going to just add more contrast between the black and white values if i was to put this to zero you can see these clouds are super super soft uh, if we just jump back into the camera again yeah we're not really getting any effect from this because we're just kind of getting a gray scale finish so you're not you're not getting those harsh contrasts of shadow and light it's not really making too much of a difference uh, if we bump it up to 0 0.5 you know we can start to see some of those shadows creep in so we're starting to get some of that effect but i find that 0 0.9 works um pretty well you can see we really have that contrast between you know those pockets of light and those shadows again this is all personal preference if you did want something that is a bit more overcast 0.5 might work a little bit better but um yeah again just play with these values um they're up for your interpretation um so one of the last things i've done which actually i'm going to stay in the camera just to demonstrate this is the color one and color two the black and white values which are giving us this effect um, I have just come into the white value and changed this to 98%. Uh, if I bump this up to 100, if you just focus on the render view quickly, you can see the shadows are quite a bit darker. That essentially is because, um, like I mentioned earlier, white values is going to stay solid in that object. Black values is cutting it out of that original shape. So by having it at 100% white, if I just jump out of here, all these areas here are completely solid so you're going to get really dark shadow whereas if i just change this to 98 percent it's going to be very very slightly opaque um only a tiny amount two percent but it's just going to lighten up those shadows ever so slightly just so they're not completely black um just because you know that's going to crush the values in your render um and you know you can see if i drop this way down you know, it's really going to lift those shadows. Um, so you can kind of see how that works. But I find 98 just helps to lift them just a tiny bit, but you still get nice contrast, but the shadows aren't completely black. And that essentially is the setup. Um, a lot of those values that I just talked over, again, up for interpretation, depends on your scene, the scale of the scene and the kind of look you're going for. But you can tweak all those values. Those are the main parameters I would change. Um, to get the result you want. And then you can come into your Redshift object tag and just uncheck primary ray visible. Um, that way it won't appear in your scene if for some reason it was in the scene in the first place. So yeah, that's the setup for today. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. You know, just want to mention again, the Gumroad is there if you wanted to download any of the project files. I'm, I'm constantly updating it with new projects on there. So feel free to check it out. Uh, maybe there's something on there that interests you. But if you found today's video helpful, you know, leave that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. There's going to be plenty more content coming this year. And drop any comments in the comment section down below if you have any questions or any ideas for any other videos. I think that's everything from me. Pleasure to be back. Pleasure to be making content for you guys again. Hopefully you found it helpful and I will catch you in the next one. All right. Peace.